our man Teddy Kegstad. Every Wednesday, folks, we talk to Teddy at 40 past the hour. You can read Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report, folks. Every Monday, he puts out a new issue. He puts out updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check it out under the newsletter tab on the front page of TFNN. It's $97 a month, folks, and you get it for 30 days risk-free with a money-back guarantee. And right now, folks, you're seeing it. We're talking about yields. We're talking about the dollar, right? It's driving so much of this action going on. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, it seems like we always got an eventful market when we bring you on on Wednesdays, Teddy, but it <laughs> seems like that's par for the course these days. Um, where do you want to begin? You want to talk a little bit maybe just about what we got yesterday with the move? Uh, pretty interesting. I'm not sure if you listened to the program that we got dollar higher Right, we got some yield moves, and then the yield kind of pulls back. What do you think of the action right now? With maybe the dollar, the yields, or just the general consensus of what we saw yesterday? Um, mm -hmm. Some huge action following the the chairman's uh, speech, and he does it again today. Sure. Well, I think that yesterday, I mean, when you if you before he started speaking, it was an opposite situation. The dollar was under pressure, you know, and yields were uh, um, pulling back and stuff like that, and it looked like it was going to be a different type of day. Obviously, once he started speaking, you know, and I think the biggest thing is that, you know, if you look at how the narrative has changed, I mean, just over the past couple of weeks, you know, uh, the consensus was all about the Fed stopping its hawkishness and becoming even possibly dovish at the end of the year. You know, right. now they've been proven totally wrong on that direction, which they've been talking about for months. And now they've gone flip side, too. You know, it was breaking news, breaking news. Powell thinks we have too much inflation. Rates are going to go to the moon now. You know, right. I mean, I saw projections yesterday that they're looking at. Uh, they went from saying no more um, rate hikes, you know, to saying that, you know what, there's going to be excessive rate hikes. You know, I was looking at the forecast. Now they're looking at every meeting to be a half a point to three quarters of a point going throughout the rest of the year. I mean, I started laughing when I saw that. Okay, I mean, that's a you're yeah. talking about a pendulum shift that's so nonsensical. You know, my so eyes yesterday... blinked a few times when you said that, Teddy. I stuttered. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Right. You know. So, and I think that you have a lot of overkill that went on yesterday, especially okay. with that kind of stuff. You know. Yeah. Now today, I think you're going to see a little bit more of a calm trade until Powell speaks again. But he's already said what he's he's not going to say anything different. Right. You know, it's just going to be a repeat. You know. Yeah. So day one now, is I mean, the event for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yields put in a nice high, you know, back on Friday. They had a big surge that pulled back, you know, and you had follow through today. I mean, look at today. The bonds are up. The 10-year is up, you know. So, I mean, are, are rates going higher? Absolutely, you know. Yeah. But there's this is a profit-taking move right now. I would use caution nice. just saying, you know, that you're going to see yields raise, go up very, very quickly. You know, wait until they pull the trigger, you know. I mean, we okay. know now that the target point for sure is going to be much higher than originally expected just a couple of months ago you know yeah. so the market will adjust to that you know so but I, I wouldn't get too overly you know caught up in it actually today especially nice and it, it is pretty remarkable man when you look at where we are just in equities and you did a great job just talking about I mean pretty wild how recently this market was talking about the idea that we would be cutting um, it's it, you'd get laughed out of the, the store right now if you talked about that conversation and meanwhile I mean, the markets have some volatility, man, but since the market has figured out that aspect of things, we've held up pretty well, man. I mean, even this year, we're talking about a range from 38.50 to 41.50, and we're right in the middle of that range right now. And meanwhile, we got yields you just talked about, 50 and 75. My goodness, the market, mm -hmm. um, if that ever comes to fruition, watch out, folks. 4,000 on the S&P is not even close if we start getting 50 and 75. I don't think that's going to happen right now, but who knows where mm -hmm. the data goes, right, Teddy? It's like we've right. seen the data defy. If we get a number on Friday that blows things away and we get a hot CPI again or something, mm -hmm. everything's on the table. So it's pretty wild. And I think you hit the nail on the head there, Tommy. I think that's exactly what's going to happen with these numbers. You know, they're becoming more and more important. This is like the old days, which when, they, when the interest rates start to swing because of these numbers, odds are unemployment's going to be relatively low. There shouldn't be a big shocker in that number, you know? So that means more hawkishness with the Fed. CPI and PPI, even if they're not as bad as like expected, if they come out even better, they're still not going to be good numbers, relatively yeah. speaking. You know, so and I think that that's something we all have to really keep in our main focus as far as driving through the markets over the next couple of weeks, especially. I think one of the things I deal with myself, right, is there's there's a it's like a human tendency, man, to think that we've never dealt with inflation. So, of course, it's going to abate, you know, and, and I, I'm trying to train my own brain, you know, to say, hold on a second. Sure. man. Like we just had you know, 0% interest rate forever, basically. And, you know, right. ballpark and everything, exaggerating everything. But 
and we got generational inflation. Who says that it doesn't go away in a year, man? And all of the numbers we talk about, um, I'm not sure if you heard the caller. We got Jose from Lakeley. He's right. You know, it's like you, you, no one's out there looking for a job that can't get one right now. It's like the right. wage numbers in the ADP, 7 and 14 percent. I just feel like we got a long way to go, potentially. And we get to find out every month with the data. But, boy, I see a big risk that this thing is a battle. Um, my dad's been on there talking about dramatically higher rates and you just better be planning for the possibility, folks, because it's very hard to imagine that this thing just uh, drops to 2% and we're seeing how, how much of a struggle. Uh, mm -hmm. Not supposed to get sticky at these levels, right, Teddy? And boy, we're getting right. sticky, if not actually going up, which is remarkable. Right. Uh, where else do you want to jump to on currencies, uh, Teddy? Where do you want to go? Uh, well, we've had some nice moves. The dollar obviously had a nice spike high yesterday. Today, I think you've got, you got to watch out for it, especially with yields going lower, that I think you're probably going to see a little profit taking in the dollar versus most currencies. You know, the yen, I think, is really peaking into a resistance where it's at. The pound actually made a really nice new low yesterday. I think you can see some follow through with that over the next couple of days. Um, nice. The euro, the euro is trying to hold up. I think that one's going to probably be to have the one that's going to have the least likelihood of having a really good move. You know, the pound, okay. I think, is where you're going to see the volatility. The, the U.S. dollar yen, I like it to the long side, but I would be very tight with my stops, you know, because I think nice. that you're you're coming to where you could have a big, sharp pullback there. And for those listeners that haven't heard you talk about it before, Teddy, so you put out the Tiger Forex report every Monday, and I know that subscribers, I'm pulling it up right now, they also gain access to a live webinar you did um, talking mm -hmm. about Forex strategies and fundamentals. I'll pull it up here so they can take a quick peek. Uh, about a 60-minute webinar that subscribers gain access to if they check out the Tiger Forex report. Can you just tell the listeners, Teddy, what you talk about in that webinar and it's what is behind the Tiger Forex report, kind of how you talk about how you put together uh, your newsletter on a mm -hmm. weekly basis? Sure, sure. Well, the, the, I started out with the webinar putting the main components of the variables that are, impact currency pricing. So we look at yields right off the bat. You know, We look at the dollar index, which gives you a broad basis of how the major basket of currencies is trading. And then we would look at that relationship with how it either is in tandem with certain currencies as far as trend or if you have divergence you know and then we look at the yield curves of the bonds you know in the 10-year versus other countries we compare the central bank action what they're doing which right now we're in a central bank wars it's a very great time to be looking at yields because you know that there's gonna be lots of action you know it's not like where anyone's sitting there scratching their head being like gee when's the next time the fed or the ecb or something is going to make a move well we sure. know pretty much it's on every single meeting you know so we get we get we delve into that and then use that like for instance how that'll drive certain currencies like the euro and the pound you know and then we also integrate oil as well because oil is also affected by interest rates and also the price of the dollar like why is oil retracing right now higher rates more expensive cost of carryover more expensive dollar oil is trading in dollars it's more expensive for oil so you're probably seeing right now a lag in purchasing because of that and that's helping to hold it, the prices down so things like that is how we look at it we put folks the please it. check it out in the front page newsletter tiger forex report teddy we appreciate it man we'll talk to you next week sounds good tommy thank okay. you okay